Hello everyone and welcome to one more episode where I share my screen and I show you what I do. Today I'm gonna simply show you how you can automate up to 90% of your work. Now you can do this in your career, in your work, corporate life kind of thing. Also you can do it if you're a content creator uh, doing YouTube. I'm gonna focus on that, basically showing you how I was able to have still a full-time job full-time career in the corporate world and at the same time be able to manage a YouTube channel across social media with all the blows and whistles. Now some might tell me Samer you're making a big claim that doing so we're going to grow or you're going to have significant growth while you yourself have a channel with 300 subscribers and to that I would say yes and no. Maybe I don't have the full answers for you and no, it's not that simple. So when you're looking at growth in something like YouTube, there's lots of skills you have to harness so you can grow. Now, I'm a tech geek, so usually I get these things from a technical perspective really well, really fast. Today, I'm able to automate 90% of what I do on YouTube. This is giving me space in doing my day job, spending time with my family. But on top of that, it's giving me the flexibility to focus on what matters on YouTube, the areas where I'm still weak. So part of it is the editing, scripting, talking to the camera and so forth. In the past, I was just juggling, not giving the important parts focus. Today, because I automated 90% of what I do on YouTube, I am able to focus more on the content, interact with people, understand what they want, and then keep driving this and learning from it. And hopefully at, at one point, I'm gonna hit that level of proficiency in what I do on YouTube. And then, and only then, hopefully when I have all these skills at the minimum level expected from the audience, I will start growing. So I'm just here to show you what I did to automate 90% of what I do on the channel. Maybe it will help you. So if you have the other skills worked out yourself, nearly I can guarantee that this will lead you to grow much faster. Before we dive in, if you are new to the channel, I am Samer. I do videos on YouTube and across social media around business, supply chain, procurement in general. And then I do a lot of videos on technology, AI, and so forth. Now, if you are joining from either or one of these niches or areas, I hope you give me a chance in terms of watching the content. So I try to serve both. I enjoy serving both niches and that's why I keep doing technology and then business. And in my mind, I believe that both worlds collide at some point. And as we progress in the future, especially with technology, they will be interlinked and inseparable as two areas. So if you're into tech, please hang around. You're going to always get the tech and it won't hurt you maybe if you have the time to look into the other business linked videos. And the same goes for my lovely subscribers who come for the business supply chain and procurement content. So now with no further ado, we'll jump into how I automate 90% of my workflow. Now I'm going to focus on probably three tools mainly. At the heart of it all, is Zapier. So Zapier is an automation tool. Uh, it's an online tool, a no code tool, which is a very powerful thing today that I use to automate everything. Through Zapier, I also use ChatGPT, which everyone knows at this stage. And then I use tools like Airtable and others that facilitate moving data and managing things. The intent today is not to dig deep and dissect each of the automations I've done rather than just give you an idea, the things I thought of as an automation for my channel and the logic behind it, as, as I'll take you quickly through them. Maybe later, if you're interested, you can leave me a comment in the comment section. If you want me to dig deeper in any of those automations, I can do a video where I go and dissect it piece by piece, bit by bit for you, if that's something uh, you want to see. And also I would be really appreciative if you share with me certain automations maybe I'm not considering. Okay, before I dig in, in a previous video, I showed you about GPTs. So something changed. Actually, it happened then. Maybe I realized it later. Today, we have the OpenAI Assistant APIs. Now, in the uh, user interface that we all know of ChatGPT itself or the GPTs, we are able to build GPTs, which is good. You can do actions, still it's clunky. What I found out that if you switch and invest some time and actually focus on dealing with 
Assistant APIs for OpenAI, you tap into a whole next level of ChatGPT capability. And I'm mentioning this ahead of Zapier because you'll see that most of the things I'm building in my automation on uh, Zapier are based on Assistant API today. In the past, I was using the normal uh, model of ChatGPT 4 and some instances, uh, ChatGPT 3.5. Now I'm using the Assistant API. So they did two things, introduced this beta feature and also reduce the cost. So it became easier just to um, actually commit and work with the Assistant API to generate higher quality content, higher quality workflows for me and the people who interact with my content. So now I'll just quickly take you through the main tools uh, I use in my Zapier. Later on, we're gonna move to Zapier itself and show you the workflows and go through them quickly, tell you what each one of them does Maybe that will give you ideas for your own automation. Okay, so we'll start with the Assistant APIs. Now, if you log into your OpenAI account, you're gonna see the playground, the other, the API keys and the other usual. And you'll find something new introduced here, which is Assistant. You can see I created multiple Assistants. Now to create an Assistant, it's very easy. You just go to the upper right corner, hit Create, give the Assistant a name, give it instruction, decide on the model and then you can either create a function which requires some coding or use the standard code interpreter and retrieval now usually i use retrieval which will give the model the ability to go retract information from a document that you upload and basically here you can add a document you can see the add button now here in this environment the only way to interact with the assistant will be to go to the playground and test where it gets really powerful when you use it either with tools like Zapier or actually create some code for your own tool to call on the assistant and retrieve information from it. I did both. I'm not a coder, by the way. And the funny thing is, if you go and get all these API documents from uh, ChatGPT, you watch many of the videos on YouTube, you um, load those API documents to ChatGPT and then ask it to walk you through uh, the process of creating that code. I, I think anyone who just gives it time, uh, trial and error, you'll be able to do it. And I've done both and it makes it super, super powerful. The easiest way ever is Zapier because Zapier is a no code uh, tool that can talk to assistants and I'll show you how. Okay, so here you can see uh, some of the assistants I have. So the first one is YouTube reports. This is not in use yet. So I tried to create a Zap that would retrieve my metrics uh, from YouTube through Zapier and then get it through a table, analyze it with ChatGPT and then give me a weekly uh, kind of report of how I'm doing. So even the analytics I tried to automate, I failed to do it the first time. So I'm still working on it. Just gets uh, complicated with all the metrics that I need to analyze the performance of my channel. Post writer, it's basically an assistant that is made to write me posts. Um, based on the social media that I define, the length that I define, I just give it a couple of data points and it'll do everything else for me. Blog writer, the same thing, is just focusing on writing blogs. Script writer, it just does a script for me without me doing any work. I then take that script and put in my touches, but the heavy lifting is done by this assistant. Uh, the untitled assistant is basically an assistant I created through a code. So I created a tool that basically talks to voice flow, if you know that tool. Um, and I created my own bot on my website that you can actually interview as if you're interviewing me. It can tell you things about that I can do for you if you're a business or if you're someone who's interested to know about me. So basically, you know, I can have my assistant do quick interviews on my behalf if someone wants to interview me without talking to me. So I have that assistant on my site working, telling people about procurement, supply chain, technology, um, and it somehow replicates me. And then I have my prompt buddy. I, I, this is not linked to Zapier. This is not linked to, to a tool I created. I sometimes come here and uh, basically uh, give it some information. It will create the perfect prompt for me. It's really good. So it's still for me worthwhile to come to the playground and get the prompts I need out of it. And by the way, most of the instructions I gave to the other assistants came from my prompt buddy. Let me show you one quickly. So for example, let's take the script writer. You can see I have uh, the instructions here. I have the model selected, which is uh, GPT-4-1106 preview, 
which is the one that can enable the retrieval function. And then you can see this document called script writing for YouTube.docs. So I went online and I got the best and the greatest research recommendation steps to write a script not only for youtube so i put all the elements in my mind that could help my videos and i just drop it into this document and then i link this document to this assistant and the assistant will see everything about the best way to write a script for youtube for a movie for a theatrical but in the instructions i'm telling i'm telling it what i want to achieve so it will try to give the best script that can fit my purpose but also learning from all of that knowledge that I provided through this document. Amazing stuff. You have to try it for yourself to appreciate it. And hey, if you're still watching, thank you. I appreciate your time. Don't forget to subscribe. It will help the channel a lot. And don't forget to add your comment. Ask me if you want me to do a deep dive on one of the areas I'm covering in this video. I'm gonna probably just scratch the surface, but hopefully I'll get you something that either you can use or something that might inspire you to do your own creative automation. And if you stick to the end, I will show you what I did with my tool that I use as a AI bot on my website. Again, quickly, how I build it up. And then if you're interested, just ask me and I'll create a video just focused on this one. Okay, so if you are not familiar with Airtable, it's an amazing tool. And you can do a lot with the free license. I'm using the free license here. They're generous enough to offer the API in the free license. Not many tools do that. It's basically a, a table that's on the cloud. You can think of it as an Excel. You can do a lot with this technology through Zapier and other tools. Mostly I use it with Zapier. And I'm sure most people know Notion, which is one more tool that also I use in my Zaps on Zapier. But without further ado, let's just jump into the Zapier dashboard and I'll take you through the Zaps that help me automate roughly 90% of what I need to do for YouTube. Okay, so we go to Zapier. And as I mentioned, Zapier is a no-code, low-code, really simple automation building tool. There are others in the market like Make. Honestly, I just fell into... Um, Zapier, it's the first one I got introduced to. I got hooked to it. I think it's, it's not cheap, uh, depending on the tier that you will select. It is worthwhile the money be because it allows me to buy back my time. And it's cheap for the time I get back to spend with my family and focus, keep focusing on my career, keep having success there and keep driving this thing on YouTube that I really enjoy. So I have three folders for my zaps that I create. And basically a zap is an automation uh, line. So you can link a trigger to multiple actions and then that's a zap, which is an automation. Okay, so let's start with what I do on YouTube. You can see the first one is the assistant script writer. And this is how a zap looks. Now, this is very simple. So when I want to create a script, I usually uh, throw in a title and an outline on Airtable in a specific table that I link uh, through the zap here. If we go to Airtable again, you're gonna see the script writer table just for you to get an idea you can see the table so usually i create the title and the outline everything else is created by the assistant that i created on uh, OpenAI and is fed back to the table just for my reference now what i do here is i trigger when i enter the actually the outline and then I have filtration, so it will not go into an infinite loop. I ask my assistant, the script writer assistant, to create the hook part. Again, I'm giving it instructions. I'll just give you a quick sample of how this zap looks or how this activity or action in the zap looks. So you can see my account. You can see um, the instruction I gave it. It's very simple instruction because I've the heavy lifting happened with the assistant. So the assistant knows exactly what to do. And then I specify the assistant, again, the model, I give it um, an ID. So I link the record ID as the conversation ID. So every time it's doing it without interference between different scripts that I create. And it's as simple as that. And I do, I go through these process. I keep a delay between every action on OpenAI just to avoid um, any errors from OpenAI API. And I'm creating multiple sections in my script. And then I close the script. I update the record on Airtable. So what you, you've seen on the table itself, all the other sections come in, the hook, the different sections, and then the closing. And eventually um, I create a document. 
and that document will go into my Google Drive in a specific location and the script is done. So just to give you an idea, I did a test on this and this is the script I got. You know, if you do it on ChatGPT or the GPTs, you will not get something as detailed, as well organized, as well done. So I've got around eight pages just by doing this zap and it took me literally less than a minute. Now, if I wanna make this into a video on YouTube, I'll just go in, fine tune it, put in my touch, change things, add things, and it just made things much easier for me. Okay, so let's go to the next zap. So this is the one where basically I create all my cross social media posts in one place. And also this one is triggered when I insert a field, which is again an outline for what I want to publish online on different platforms on a different table on Airtable tool. And once uh, that outline is inserted, automatically this zap is triggered and uh, it goes through a process to create for me uh, an Insta, Instagram basically, Facebook and TikTok uh, post, a Twitter post and a LinkedIn post. And then it goes to create again, a YouTube short and YouTube tags uh, and a YouTube title. All of those are done through my post assistant that I've shown you in the OpenAI assistant section. And eventually it will go back, feed that table. So I have all the information there. And then it will send me an email telling me it's all done you know, for this post. And I'll tell you now in a different zap how we'll use that information that's already generated by the system. And just to give you a sense of the kind of time I save using these zaps. So this is the table I was mentioning in the previous zap where it takes the outline, which is here, this part, and then generates all the cross social media posts for me. And if you see at the multiple posts I have, you can see all the different texts, different posts, timing, everything is auto generated and it's all in one place. And literally I do this in seconds. Once I decide uh, the video I'm gonna work with or um, the, sometimes it's just a repurposed vertical cut type of video. Um, it's just, I put the outline, what this small video talks about. It gives me all that kind of different posts made and tailored for the different types of social media. So what's written for Facebook is totally different from what's written for uh, Twitter or X and what's written for LinkedIn. So the assistant will try to, based on the instructions, based on the, the document, I also I added with the best practices for each platform, it will try to decide the best post for each platform to get more traction. Okay, so the third one is where it gets really interesting. So this one is triggered when I throw a video file into my Google Drive. So I have a designated folder where I take that video, usually a short one I use for this zap. I just throw it in that folder. Automatically it triggers the zap. It will go to my table that I just shown you. It will capture all the text for the different posts and then it will use a tool called Metracool if you don't know it or Metricool and it will create and schedule all the posts across all social media platforms all at once for me. So it takes me to drop two, three, four short videos and I have them across six different platforms and across different times in the future. Imagine the time it takes to do that manually. And I used to do that and it left no time to focus on the script or the content that I actually deliver to the people. Today, it literally takes me a minute just to drop a file. Everything is scheduled and ready to post. I do not have to sweat or worry about it at all. And again, at the end, when everything is done and scheduled for me, it will send me an email telling me, good job, everything is posted, you can go check it. Now, this zap that I shown you, I use it mostly for my short form video. And this fourth zap is more for my long form video. So usually when I create something like this, a long form, um, I edit it carefully and then I upload it to YouTube, but also I want it to be addressed like the short form videos in terms of scheduling, planning, and everything I can actually automate. So in this zap, it triggers when a new video goes to my channel, now there's some kind of um, formatting I done and then a filtration I done because I do not want this to happen again for uh, the short videos that I publish. So I have a filtration process that will prevent that. So no duplication will happen in my automation. But again, what it will do is basically it will go to the uh, same table, pick up all the uh, information there. It will 
send the link of the YouTube video so I do not need to worry about where my links and managing my links of my YouTube videos. It will just go update it in that table, say, okay, this is the video already uploaded, this is the link, and then it will take all the other information that was generated by the post assistant, and then it will schedule it for me cross-platform, which is basically the post, a link for the video, and that's it. Everything is set for me. I only need to shoot the video and put it on YouTube, everything else happens for me. And on top of that, a cherry on the top for me, it continues into creating a blog post based on that video that was uploaded. So it basically captures the title and description of the video, creates a whole blog post on the topic, and again, sends it as a draft to my tool that I use for uh, posting blogs, and it's ready for me to review modify final touches and ready to post so imagine from one video i post on youtube i have multiple posts set up across many social media platforms i have a blog draft created ready for me about the video and its content that i can use also to share to promote the video and promote my own blog as well all done in seconds powerful stuff isn't it and also at the end it will send me an email telling me it's done the fifth one here i will not go through it but basically Every time I upload a video on YouTube, it will take it, put it on my Pinterest, and then put it on my subreddit. So just for me to also be present there. And the last one is the one I mentioned, something I'm working on, trying to figure out for myself, create an assistant, which I, I did, and then create a Zap that will pull in my analytics information from YouTube, analyze it through uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI Assistant API, and then give me weekly reports of how, how I'm doing. Still in the working, I couldn't figure it out yet. Now, let me move to the podcast folder. And it has one zap. And it's an amazing zap. It made me uh, capable of doing the podcast and YouTube and everything else pretty easy. And what it does here is whenever I decide on a guest and I talk to that guest and they're happy and willing to come on my uh, podcast, I send them a form using JotForm where I capture many information about them, about even their setup at home, what they are interested in discussing on the podcast, and I just get a background uh, on them, how would they like to be introduced on the podcast, and this goes through an automation that basically details based on their input, details the topic to be discussed, and then create a guest intro and taking everything that we did through uh, ChatGPT, a GPT-4 model, and add it to my database on Notion, where basically I manage everything around my podcast. So I will go in after the guest fills that form, I will find the whole script structure for the podcast done. Then I go in, detail it, fine tune it, put in my topics that I want to discuss, and then share it with the guest before we go into the podcast. Cuts through so many work I need to do if I'm doing this manually. And again, here, it will send the guest an email thanking him for filling the form. And also it will send me an email informing me that this whole zap is done. The script is ready for me just to go and take it to the next step uh, as I plan the podcast. Now, last but not least, I'll take you through my blog um, automations. So I have two active. So the first one, it's again, utilizing Airtable. I have a table dedicated for my managing my blogs and blog posts. And again, if I want to create a blog on a certain topic, I put in the title and the outline for that blog. And what it will do here is it will go through the process of creating for me, not only the different sections of that blog and the text of that blog, but also based on the outline and the title, obviously, but also the images leveraging DALI E3 and Everything is fed back to my database, the Airtable database, and then the whole blog is created. And when I go into the blog, it is ready for me with images that are unique because it's coming from Dali E, which helps SEO. And again, it just takes me to read it through, review it, put all my own touches. Sometimes I do fact checking because still we're not in a place where we're 100% sure of what ChatGPT gives us and I post the blog. So it killed through hours and hours of blog writing requirements. Now I am able to do multiple blogs with least amount of interference and time invested from my side. And I'm doing that at high quality. 
as if I have a real assistant doing the heavy lifting for me so I can do the fine tuning and then publish those videos or blogs or whatever. And again here, you know, to go through the process, you can see, you can see these are the ones where I generate the photos. This is text, um, developing different um, aspects of the blog. And then I create the post in Ghost. So Ghost is the tool where I manage my blog site and where I create those posts and then update the record uh, on Airtable. And again, to send me an email telling me the blog is ready for you to review and publish. The second one in the blog folder is one that basically will take something I published, so it went live online, take that published post as a trigger, and then go through a process to create again, social media posts across all platforms where I basically publish my blog. So let's take a look here. So again, I have a post published in Ghost. So that's the post I created, I edited and I published, it went live. And then it will go through uh, ChatGPT, the the post writer assistant API that I created and to ask it for a post that goes for Twitter and then a post that will go for uh, LinkedIn. And based on that, I schedule the posts across a um, platform using the metrical actions here. And also I throw the link for that post and the blog post in Reddit. And then I get an email that everything is done. And basically I know that my blog post scheduled to be published on other uh, social media platforms and all is done and scheduled for me through this app. And again, eventually I get an email just to know all of this is done and executed. Okay, so now for the bonus part, again, if you're still here, thank you very much for sticking in and please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and the bell icon to keep getting similar content. I would appreciate it. I would definitely benefit from it. Um, as a new YouTuber. Okay, so I promised you to show you how my bot works on my website and give you a high level approach of how that was done. So without further ado, let me take you to my website. So this is my website. And by the way, as you're looking at it, feel free to go to my website. You'll find the link in the video description, visit it, subscribe to my newsletter. And through that, you're going to get a lot about business and even some about technology. But now let me close this in the chat so when you log into my website you're going to see this part and this is how it will welcome you so i'll just put start a new chat so it will tell you hi i'm samer's digital twin how can i assist you ask samer digital me anything about my work personality and what i can do for you now i'm just trying to show you the end result so you'd appreciate that this is something worthwhile knowing about. So let me ask it a question about me. So I'm asking it, how is Samer as a manager like? I even misspelled manager, manger like, this is how I wrote it. Let's see how it responds. And voila, we have a response. So let me scroll up, it's a long one. So it is saying, or basically digital me is saying, in managing others, I have a unique approach that is characterized by several notable behaviors and tendencies, which I believe makes me an efficient manager. Some of my key managerial traits include, and it goes through it, na, 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 many areas surrounding myself with like-minded people, okay. And even at the end, it uh, still has a call to action to go my website and um, um, even uh, follow me on LinkedIn, imagine. I fed it with lots of documents like my CV or resume. So even there's a report and analysis that I did at work that talks about my personality as a leader or a manager in a business. And also I fed it that document uh, and other things that could give the AI a picture or about me as a professional in the corporate world, about my personality as a professional um, and, and things I can actually do for people in terms of consultancy or work or whatever. Basically, you, you can interview me through talking to this AI. And this is why it's able to answer of how I behave uh, as a manager in a certain scenario. You can ask it other questions, feel free to do so and test it for me. Tell me if you get something crazy. But also I have given the uh, assistant instructions to basically say, I don't know if anything is out of the bounds of the uh, of the domains that I asked it to be able to answer um, and feed people information through. So interesting stuff. So companies out there, you wanna interview me, actually you can do it through my AI and then give me a call and we'll have a discussion. But you can today have, without talking to me, an early insight into my career, character, personality. This is the new world now. 
someone like me who knows nothing about coding can have a website with a bot on it, with an assistant that can answer everything about me. It's based on artificial intelligence. Anyone can do it. If I can do it, you can do it 100%. So it, this one is much harder than doing a, a Zap because Zapier is very intuitive and it's a no-code tool. This one took me lots of research. It took me lots of back and forth with ChatGPT after I fed it um, or copy-pasted basically the uh, assistant API documentation from OpenAI, uh, but eventually you'll be able to do it. So this is one thing that will help you and something that I have to mention. So this is a shout out to a YouTuber called Liam Outley. So I hope I pronounce his name properly. And he's an expert clearly on AI and automation. And when I was struggling to really get my bot to work, his website was really an invaluable resource for doing that because he did exactly that. So he did something even more complex. He created a bot for a company that links um, the assistant that you create with Google location and with weather and with lots of things. So follow him on YouTube and then go to his site, sign up for his newsletter, sign up for his website, and you'll find a ton of resources that he's giving to the world basically for free. So follow him, subscribe to him. I did subscribe to his channel. He's clearly someone I'm going to keep following and learning from. And I, I think he's based in Dubai like myself. So I will tag him in this video and I'll put a link for his website because I really have to give credit where credit is due. His resources help me immensely. And I will spend more time on his resources that is totally for free and learn more on doing other stuff that potentially you can do using the assistance, but maybe it will require more code, but all in all, a really amazing resource. So shout out to Liam again. So this is uh, where I host my code, basically using Griplet. Now, again, uh, most of this is done through uh, reading what Liam had on his website. And then I had to basically remove areas that are not necessary for what, what I'm trying to achieve uh, for me to get it to work. Ripplet is a website where you can actually code and um, and it has a very generous free subscription. I think you need to pay money in case you want to make it private or you want to work with teams. But for something like this, Ripplet is perfectly fine. Again, I'm not a coder. So some of you who are coders watching this and you see me using wrong terms, please forgive me. But basically you can load all the libraries that you need for your code like Python and other easily and in seconds using Ripplet. And then you can code and add files and do whatever you want. So. I worked uh, with what Liam provided. I worked with what I got through ChatGPT from the uh, API assistant uh, documentations. I had to play a little trial and error, doing running and then getting errors, feeding them back ChatGPT and you know the whole drill until I got it to work. Now, once it works, it will create the assistant for you. So this is the only time I didn't create the assistant uh, on the OpenAI website. I actually, the, the code itself will trigger the creation of the assistant and later on it will keep using that assistant and then and this is something i learned from liam is um, a tool called voice flow which is basically a bot creating tool that i think it can be a standalone to do something like that and it integrates with OpenAI and ChatGPT. but basically i trusted his process uh, because clearly he knows what he's talking about and then you simply link the output of this replet function when it's run, and this is one is running that you see it's live, it's running, and then you link it to your voice flow. And honestly, I didn't spend enough time to learn how to work out voice flow. Uh, this is one of the things I got from Liam's website. So he shares all these templates uh, for free. And I got his template. I played a little bit with it. I did some uh, trial and error, and eventually it started working. Um, finally, it's very easy to use it. You basically publish your bot and it will give you an HTML code that you can embed in your uh, website. For me, I didn't even touch the code. I used the inject feature and I injected it to my footer and automatically it's there on my website working seamlessly with the assistant are answering people based on the document that I provided. And just to let you know, because I didn't use it and build it on OpenAI, I actually loaded 
the document here. Um, so even Liam uh, called it knowledge.docs. So I didn't want any naming to affect the code and how it operates. So I, I put all my information on this document. I called it knowledge.docs and then I uploaded it here. And when it ran, it ran smoothly. Just some errors because I had to take some parts out that I didn't need. Um, so it took some time. It will take you some time, but I would say if you dedicate yourself, it will take you a day or two, um, even less if what you're trying to achieve is closer to what Liam created and shared with the whole world. And this brings us to the end of this video. Now, I know I just went on the surface. I didn't dig deeper. I didn't show you the specifics of creating uh, these apps. If you know Zapier already, I'm pretty sure this will give you ideas if you didn't have uh, some of these apps already done for you. If you are using Zapier, in ways I am missing or you want me to go through one or two of the apps I shared but in very step-by-step -step detailed level please leave a comment in the comment section and again don't forget to subscribe interact with the channel follow me here on YouTube and on other social media platforms subscribe to my newsletter any of those actions will help the channel a lot and this is the fuel that keeps me on going and with this, go mess around with Zapier, mess around with the Assistant API on OpenAI site, mess with it and learn. We're all together in this learning journey, especially in the AI era. Thank you for watching and goodbye.